welcome back to Home Time. We're here in Mankato, Minnesota to continue work on restoring the childhood home of Maud Hart Lovelace. Now she wrote the children's book series, the Betsy Tacey books, and this house is featured prominently in those stories. Now it's where the main character, Betsy, lived during the first couple books of the series, and it's called the Betsy House. Even though Maud's family moved away about 100 years ago, it's kind of a shrine to Betsy Tacey fans all over the world. We have a small group of people who really care about our history here in Mankato and want to see it preserved and they're willing to work very hard. Although it's a very small number, we would like more volunteers, but we're willing to put in long hours to uh, bring about such restoration. They'd already done quite a bit of work shoring up the foundation and putting on a new roof when we showed up a couple of years ago to help with some exterior work. As far as uh, renovating older houses, I think it's very important that, you know, no matter what you do, it looks like it was always there. I think our volunteers are all very pleased to see the progress that we're making and certainly the fans and our members are going to be so pleased to see uh, what's happened. They've been supporting us all along and for them to be able to see progress is wonderful. The group's goal is to get the inside looking as good as the outside and give Betsy Tacey fans a chance to see what the house looked like when the author lived here. So stick around and see what we find at Betsy's house. No matter what the dream, GMC is proud to support home time in making it come true. GMC, we are professional grade. When banks compete for your mortgage, some offers really stand out. You can compare up to four customized offers at LendingTree and choose the one that's right for you. 1-800-555-TREE. When banks compete, you win. LendingTree.com. And by Johns Manville. Manufacturers of a complete line of formaldehyde-free fiberglass insulation. Johns Manville. Our focus is insulation. I really like seeing a demolition like this where there is a finished product in mind in terms of putting it back together. Well, we're trying to preserve part of the history of Mankato and especially of Maud Hart Loveless, who was the author that lived in this house. and. Uh, who wrote the Betsy Tacey books, and I, I think it's really important to uh, preserve as much of the history of this as what we can. We think it's very important for us to figure out exactly how this house was built so that we can tell the story of what it was like when Maud lived here. It helps us compare a lot of the things that Maud wrote about in the books to the actual um, house. So to us, that's important. We are piecing together piece by piece. We don't have any pictures of the inside, so this is kind of a very controlled demolition so that we can see where doorways used to be, whether there were windows there, and we're looking for artifacts that may have fallen into cracks, newspapers that are in walls, and so we're going to go through room by room, and as we demo, we're going to document everything very carefully, and we're going to start the first phase of this. So we're going to kind of divide up into groups, maybe uh, three, four to a group, uh, things have to be kind of torn out as they were put in backwards. We'll have to start with all the trim, take all of that off. We're going to pretty much go down to the exterior studs on all the exterior walls and most all of the ceilings and, and walls as well. Uh, I guess that's all I would have. Having a meeting this morning, Dennis kind of told everybody what rooms we're going to work on, what's going to happen in these rooms. So they kind of put certain people in charge of each room. So. Judd's got a big wall to bust open. There's an old arch, I guess, in between these two rooms, and they want to open that up so we can get access to the porch for running out garbage. And Lenny's put in charge of the kitchen today, so he's got a lot of cabinets to take apart. There's some light fixtures, exhaust fans. He's got his work cut out for him. It's good. I mean, the house is not that big, but people are getting spread out. They're working together. People are toting, sweeping, cleaning, taking pictures. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of a well-oiled machine, so Dennis and Lillian are doing a good job. They really are. You know, it's kind of just going to have to be a slow removal layer of paneling and maybe look at it and see if there was an opening here, an opening there. If I were tearing it apart myself, I just am not concerned about the historical part of it. I just go in there and go crazy and the lath would fly and the plaster would fly and I wouldn't worry about it. It'd be out. You know, but we have to go a little slower with this process here. We got the horsepower here, we can do it. We got bars, hammers, we're stripping it right down to the bare studs, we can see what, what, how it was originally built, and that's what we're going for. 
Beautiful. My group's working on this uh, room in here, we call it the paneling room. Three different kinds of paneling, we're going to tear that all off, get the stuff off the ceiling. This little trim up here is actually nailed on better than all the paneling. Once we get this off, we'll start ripping the paneling off. What we found in the kitchen is, is an existing old window, you can kind of see the old framing. And the rumor is, is that they want to put the old window back in. Which means you got to make one and stick it back in the opening. So it's uh, more work here. Getting fogged up. Woo. Stuff comes off pretty good. Okay, I got it. Excellent. We got the arch done. That looks good. Got a nice pathway going through there. Now we're stripping the the walls. I'm getting it down to here. Then the wood last coming off. You can see there's no insulation in those cavities. So it's going to be stripped right down. front parlor we have taken out most of the exterior walls and interior walls. We got the dustiest and dirtiest to go yet, that's the ceiling. But it's going fast, uh, things are progressing right along. We're working on the flush from the ceiling, it's amazing how well this stuff comes down. A lot of water damage, it's pretty loose but still getting kind of tired. Even though it's supposedly a surgical demolition, it's still demo. We still have dust, we still have debris, we still have people with big sledgehammers knocking out studs and making all kinds of noise. But everything's being very carefully taken out that's found and placed in a safe spot. And eventually it'll all be looked at and decided what to do with it. It's so much easier just to cover up the old stuff with new stuff and pretend it wasn't there. And I think that's kind of the typical, typical case we have right here. I mean, with the plaster underneath the sheetrock and the lath underneath the plaster. and it, there's, there's a lot of layers there. Kind of looks like a major assault right now, but I think it's, uh, there's a definite uh, reason for doing what they're doing and how they're doing it. Once these walls are closed up again, the stories that they've told us uh, won't be apparent anymore. So the pictures are going to be what we can, we can use to verify uh, the facts that we found between the walls. Mankato, in my opinion, has a bad reputation of wrecking historic structures. Tearing down like the Salt Paw Hotel and some of these things that are historical. The new ones come in and there's, it's gone, history's gone. Well, I hope this house being changed and, and brought back to its original state would encourage people to come and see the history of Mankato. It gives us a stronger footing and it gives our children a sense of being, a sense of belonging, not just in Mankato, but their place in the world. You know, the whole project kind of slowed way down uh, when we got to that ceiling in the front room here. We were just kind of tearing away and then all of a sudden we were taking little lath boards out one piece at a time and it was pretty interesting to see the, uh, the gals on the society get all excited about some of the stuff we were pulling out was, uh, was interesting and fun. So show me what you found. Well, we're finding a lot of newspapers from 1939. They're in excellent shape and those were used as underlayment for the insulation so we know that that's when that insulation was put in. We're finding pieces of the original wallpaper, some very old high button shoes, pieces of clothing. We've found a photograph of a little girl. We don't know who she is yet, but that's exciting to try to figure out who that is. We're finding little booklets, pamphlets, and I think the most exciting thing we found are two letters from 1884 and 1885, and so that will be fun to try to trace who those were written by. Oh, yeah. I'm very excited because I am amazed at how many things we did find. I was expecting to find maybe a few newspapers, maybe a magazine or two, maybe a couple of little toys, but we have amassed a huge amount of artifacts from this house, and yeah. we're still finding more things. Cool. You want to go see if they've yes, got any more? Yes, let's go see if there's any more. Okay. It was exactly 100 years ago that Maud's family moved away from this house. They moved in 1906, but it's just remarkable what we've done here today. It's fun working here, it really is. I mean, this is, a, this is a piece of history and you don't get to do this every day and I'm taking some of it home with me. Well, it took about three days to get everything ripped apart to the point where we could assess what we need for framing. There was a little bit of rot. Some areas weren't supported real well, very typical of a home that age. So we're gonna pick up some two by fours, two by six, some LVLs. We'll frame that up as well as prep a window frame we're going to be working with. But before we get into that, I want to tell you it was very interesting. 
tearing apart some of the stuff in the kitchen. There were a couple of walls around the basement stairway that had been added in the not too distant past. As we tore those out, it was fun slowly revealing the original elements underneath the whole thing. It's kind of like uh, taking a puzzle apart and trying to put it back together. Every time you take a layer off, it reveals something new. So the process is a little slow because you want to sit back and, and try to analyze things, try to what was here, why was it here. Uh, if you can get back to the original or at least transform maybe some bad renovations into something that makes it look like it's supposed to be period, I think that's very important to, and it's very gratifying uh, when it all comes together and you can stand back and look at it. Well, obviously, when you're doing this amount of demo, you're going to create quite a bit of debris. Even though we try to save as many old timbers, cabinetry, and flooring as possible, a lot of this stuff has to be hauled out. With a good pair of gloves, some things can be stacked and hauled out by hand, but there's still a few critical items that help make the whole thing go a lot faster. First of all, the good old trash bag. We like these heavy-duty contractor cleanup bags. Get one with 3 mil, 42-gallon works great. You can put splintered wood, drywall, plastic, you don't have to worry about them ripping and tearing. Another thing that's just about a must are these 44-gallon trash cans. It's great to have at least three or four on a job like this because this way one person can be thrown in the dumpster, a couple more can be loading them up. You never have somebody doing demo and not have something to put it in. And the great thing is uh, three or four of these take up the same space as uh, five or six, so get plenty of them. The five gallon buckets are great because sometimes if you're hauling out heavy stuff like plaster, we'll fill up a 44 gallon trash can halfway and it takes three, four guys to haul the thing out. And a scoop style shovel for picking up that debris off the floor, putting it in your five gallon bucket or the trash can. And then of course there's wheelbarrows, dust pans, brooms, but I'll tell you on a project like this, you're nowhere without a dumpster. In our case, a local Mankato contractor donated the one we used, and as always, the key there was to carefully manage the loading process in order to minimize the number of times the container had to be hauled out and emptied. With something this size, we loaded it up about four to five times during the demo phase, so the help was greatly appreciated. You ready? Now today isn't so much about demolition here as it is about getting the house structurally sound and there are a few key places that that needs to happen. Here on this exterior wall is very rotted out causing a lot of problems with sagging so that's going to be jacked up and beefed up a little bit. We have the entranceway between the dining room and parlor that's going to get a header over the top as well because that's sagging a little bit. And then over here is a really obvious few inch sag between the two parlors so, so that's being jacked up and that'll be support it as well so eventually the whole place will be nice and structurally sound. I think we're going to beef this house up. This baby's going to be straight, strong. It's overspanned, underbuilt, and just badly done and we're trying to fix all that. This laminated LVL got a lot of strength to it. There's about 12 laminations here and each one of those laminations adds to the strength of it. We're going to end nail them in through our king studs. We're going to nail on both sides together and make it one big unit. It'll be really strong. This baby ain't going anywhere. And a lot of the joists and rafter tails are rotted out as well. So now we're going to scab on short little pieces of 2 by 4 to sit on top of our new top plate. And as soon as we got that done, we can drop this temporary beam out of here. We're putting some major heat up here. It's fun stuff to do. I dig it. There's additional work to be done as far as furring out the studs, uh, putting in some nailers in all the corners. Okay. We're probably okay. doing a little overkill with the 14 inch LVLs, but why not? Uh, better safe than sorry. <laughs> so right now we've ended up using seven LVLs, 14 feet long, and that includes putting in headers, sistering joists. All of them have been ripped or cut in order to match where they need to go. And I would say now, this is all pretty well beefed up. Now usually in a house like this, the electrical system is just a mess. So when all the walls and ceilings are open like this, it's a great time to do something about it. So we have electrician Kurt Ireland over. He's running cable and hooking up new boxes. You know, there's spots that are updated already. There's some new boxes in that they chased in the kitchen. But otherwise, it was pretty much all, all knob and tube. So. All the old stuff will go. When we get done, we'll have outlets every 6 to 12 feet, and it'll be just like a brand new house. I think he's got it pretty much as required by code. Uh, smoke alarms uh, where he needs to have them. we got three-way switches in the doorways where they need to be or should be. So things are looking good. Most of our energy is now focused on Betsy's house. 
but across the street is another house owned by the Betsy Tacy Society. And that's where Maud Hart Loveless's best friend lived, a little girl known as Tacy in the books. There's been a lot of remodeling there to make Tacy's house look just like it did when the books took place. So it's in pretty good shape now, and the society's been able to use it as kind of a museum, gift shop, and just a real nice place for special events. It's been shut down for the past couple of weeks. They thought what a perfect time to get a little UV protection going for some of the artifacts. How to accomplish that, they added this film to the windows. This cuts down 99.9% .9 of all the UV coming in, 50% of solar heat, and those are the two main culprits when it comes to discoloration and fading. Uh, we're very excited, uh, especially for the protection, but also in the energy savings that we could see from, from the heat reduction. We definitely wanted to have professionals installing this so that we do have the warranty, that we do have the protection, and we're, we're confident that, that it's done right. It'll take uh, about three quarters of a day. We first measure the windows, then we come down here. This blade is set into the box to cut that film. So while we're pulling it out, it is cutting that film to exact measurements. Once we got all the films cut, then we go and we start prepping all the windows. And there's about 60 panes of glass, and we have to go around, clean every single one. Then we use a four inch scraper, and we scrape the window, try to get all the paint, or if there's adhesive on there. And once we clean it, we take one of these rolls down here. There's a protective layer here. We peel that off. We spray it down, we spray the window, and then we take it and apply it on there. Then we have a squeegee and we take all that solution out. Then we trim it, take the excess film out, then we wash it, and then we're done. This is a sample demonstrating a piece of glass that has no film on it and a piece that does. And you can see that's a very subtle difference between the two. So when you put this film on, it's not changing the appearance of your house. That sounds like exactly what we want. Before we had to be so careful as to what we could set out and leave on display because uh, we were so afraid of, of damage from the sun. It looks just like it did before they came and we have the protection. And eventually when Betsy's house is ready, we will, we will be putting it there too. Well, there's a couple, two, three things that uh, we'd like to get done today. We want to get that window in over there to the south. And uh, Lenny's working on the top plates over there. We would also like to finish up some fur and out, so things are moving along real well. We're going to remove this old window for a new one. We want to be very careful so we don't damage any of this siding that we put on last year. Here, Dean. The way we originally did the three windows is replicated what Denny had done on the Tacy house, which when you take a look at them, they seem to be identical to what is originally in the Betsy house here. So we're going to do the same thing for the kitchen window. So once again, we contacted the company North Mankato that specializes in custom windows. They agreed to do a couple more sashes and a storm window, just like they did for the dining room windows. We do a lot of old preservation work that nobody else wants to do anymore, but we make the old-fashioned storm windows and the old-fashioned sashes. When we get the order in, we look at the sizing of it, and we have standard sizes in our bins that we buy the parts uh, already mortise and tenon, but many times the standard size is not the one they need, so it's got to be a custom size. So we select the right, the closest size to a standard, then we end cut the, uh, the mortise or tenon off there, and then we have to run it to the mortise or tenon machine so we can put that same ending on it again. And that takes some work. It's a very time consuming process. It's manual labor. The customer will give us what bevel they want, and then we will take that bottom rail piece, and we will put the correct bevel on that so it matches the original framing of the home. Then we make sure we've got all the parts there, and we put the mortise and tenon together to then make a unit. And then we put it in the frame square and we put the parts together and we nail them. Now it's assembled basically, but we got to put the glass in. So we go over there and we put a, a bed of silicone on the wood and we hand cut the glass, unless it's a large, if it's a large quantity of them, we will cut it on the computer saw. But in this case, it's hand cut. We lay the glass in there. The glass then is adhered to the sash, the wood sash itself, so it's not going to go any place. And it also keeps the water out. Then we putty them, and those stops and will cover up the silicone that's on there, and it'll give it a nice look. These guys know what they're doing, and so uh, I couldn't build the sash myself, but uh, I know they can, and they could do a much better job than even if I knew how to build it. John's crew really did a great job creating exactly the look we needed. And again, that really paid off two years ago when our focus was reworking some of the elements on the front and side of the house. 
Back then we pulled off some of the old mismatched siding, reopened a couple of original openings that had been covered over, and then installed the period correct doors and windows along with new cedar siding, a front stairway, and a porch railing. With a little paint and putty, in the end it all really fit the desired look and everybody was very happy. And now again we've got our sashes and it's time to build our jam, pull out the offending window and make it all match the original. Oh, there's some tweaking with that with that window. The pieces you're you're trying to go backwards on it. You have an opening here. You have our sash, a storm window, and we're trying to make the stuff around it. So we're kind of going backwards at it. So how's it going here, Judd? What are about all uh, set to go? Yeah, we're all set to go. We got our our side jams cut, our head jams cut, gatoed in here for our parting stop. Parting stop oh, here. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, fits like a glove. Fits Beautiful. Like a glove. And then uh, on the bottom, we uh, for our sill piece, uh, we put a 15 degree angle on that. For this guy. that in. Yeah. Oh yeah, remember keep, it well. Yeah, that'll keep it from to drain properly. Beautiful. So we're just about ready to assemble that. Yeah, let's do it. We pre-drill the uh, window parts. It's a, basically a box you're making, and then we can set our sash, upper and lower sash, put our casings on, and we got a pre-hung unit ready to set it. Perfect. <laughs> you do nice work, Jed. Windows out, now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the siding and the framing inside so it'll receive our new window. Once we put the new window in, we're going to trace around it on the siding. And those casings going to overlap this siding a little bit. We'll trace it, cut that all out with a saw, shove the new window in, we're ready to go. Well, starting off, the house was pretty much a nightmare of mixed styles with fairly cheap trim and panel, ugly ceiling tile, and just a lot of deterioration in the framing and plaster. But now after peeling back the layers of time and straightening things up a little, it's down to the original framing in most areas. The parlor's archways have been restored, the kitchen's gotten a good going over, and there's another new window more appropriate to the 1890s. We have to give a lot of credit to the uh, Betsy Tasty Society. They really work hard on this stuff. And our plan is to see this thing through until this kitchen's all trimmed out and it's looking something like it looked like when it was done in the 1800s. Uh, the whole town has taken notice of this and um, I don't know how long it will take, but whatever it takes. And with home time by our side, we can do it, huh? It's uh, quite a production. I'm glad we have all the volunteers and uh, it's, there's a lot more work to do. When I was a young boy, at four years old, I moved into this house and stayed here until I was about 11. I didn't have any idea that she lived in here, of course. She didn't have her stories out at that time, but uh, I think it's a wonderful thing. I made a little donation to it, but uh, I'd like to make some more donation to it. <laughs> and I think it's very nice to have history. I am amazed that the work has gone as fast as it has. I never envisioned that within a month or so we would be able to even see these bare walls and to see how quickly it's going and to be discovering the clues that we found. We certainly weren't planning on this a year ago, so it's put us quite far ahead in our planning. This will be the turning point for this one. Most of the dirty work will be done. Kurt, uh, the electrician's got everything looking real good. Uh, it's all up to code, so it's the turning point to making it look better. At the end, you see that window in there, and it looks sweet. It's a, it has a, a nice old flavor in that. And when I peek in there, and I, and I look, and I, I almost get a glimpse of Betsy, and they're peeking out at me. Now this whole side, all the windows match, and it looks, looks like it's supposed to. It's kind of like bringing an old ship back to sea, and that's what we're doing, and it's, it's very rewarding work to me. So until next time. An old time, ship back to sea? Yeah. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> Yeah, you take an old ship, you fix it up, you bring it back to sea. <laughs> well, we still have a few loose ends to take care of, but next time we're on insulation and drywall, hopefully you'll join us for that. Till then, for Miriam, the home time crew, I'm Dean Johnson. Thanks for watching. Visit Home Time at PBS Online. We've got more details about our projects, tips on owning and maintaining a home, and a great glossary of building terms. Stop by and see us at pbs.org. No matter what the dream, GMC is proud to support home time in making it come true. GMC, we are professional grade. When banks compete for your home equity loan, some offers really shine. You can compare up to four customized offers at LendingTree and choose the one that's right for you. 
1-800-555-TREE. When banks compete, you win. LendingTree.com. And by Johns Manville, manufacturers of a complete line of formaldehyde-free fiberglass insulation. Johns Manville. Our focus is insulation. PBS, 